forget everything you thought you knew about the peopling of the Americas. The last big frontier to be colonized by humanity is still one of the great puzzles of human history. The big questions about the early settlers, who they were, when they arrived, and how many waves there were, are being addressed by two significant studies of the DNA of modern and ancient people. But rather than producing a single, unified theory, the results raise a fresh mystery. Both find evidence of DNA related to native people from Australia and Melanesia in contemporary Native Americans. The opposing teams are still attempting to reconcile and make sense of each other's data because they were unaware of one another's plans, until the very last minute. According to these ideas, the genetic group known as Australo-Melanesians, which consists of Australians, Papuans, and Melanesians, is subtly present in the Americas. When and how it came in the New World, often known as the Americas, is a significant difference. The scientific team came to the conclusion that it entered the continent in one of two early waves of migration, whereas the science team came to the conclusion that it entered the continent much later, and was unrelated to the founding population of the Americas. For the study, scientists sequenced 79 partial and 31 whole genomes from individuals in Siberia, Oceania, North and South America. A 24,000-year-old youngster from Siberia, a 12,600-year-old child from Montana, and a 4,000-year-old skeleton from Greenland were three ancient skeletons whose genomes had already been sequenced. The research team used the ancient genomes to calibrate this DNA clock, and then looked at the genetic differences in their samples to establish how long ago different groups separated. They came to the conclusion that all Native Americans, whether ancient and contemporary, are descended from a single population in Siberia that diverged from other Asians some 23,000 years ago, and migrated into the now-submerged region of Beringia. They spread in a single wave across the Americas after spending up to 8,000 years in Beringia, a slightly shorter stay than some experts have suggested, and divided into northern and southern branches around 13,000 years ago. Even though it has considerably more accurate chronology, that depiction of the exodus is substantially recognizable. The Surue people of Amazonian Brazil, and the Aleutian Islands were among the Native Americans the science team discovered to have a startling amount of Australo-Melanesian DNA. The Australo-Melanesian connection had already been proposed by several anthropologists. They noticed that certain extinct Native American groups possessed long, narrow skulls that were different from the typical round, broad skulls of most Native Americans and resembled some Australo-Melanesians. According to the so-called Paleo-American concept, these people originated in Asia from a distinct source group than the Native Americans of today, and were descended from an earlier wave of migration. Similar claims were made about the famous 8,500-year-old Kennewick man skeleton from Washington state, but they were disproved by the discovery that in his DNA, Native Americans are his only known relatives. The findings also refute the Paleo-American theory because no evidence of Australo-Melanesian ancestry was discovered. When the team sequenced the DNA of 17 members of the extinct South American populations with the unusual heads. An overly simplified theory of skull variation is debunked by the analysis. How did living South Americans acquire this Australo Melanesian ancestry then? According to some experts, one explanation for the association could be that it reflects more recent gene flow. That, however, does not imply vessels traveling across the Pacific as some scholars had initially hypothesized. Instead, during a well-documented later wave of migration from Asia, which also populated the Aleutian Islands, the progenitors of some of today's South Americans may have mixed with Asian populations connected to today's Australo-Melanesians. Another study discovers this enigmatic Australo-Melanesian DNA in a few of the same contemporary populations, but comes to a different conclusion on its origin. Researchers matched DNA data from 197 communities outside of the Americas with partial genome, sequences of 106 Native Americans from 25 populations in Central and South America. They discovered that some Aboriginal Australians, New Guineans, and Andaman Islanders share 1% to 2% of their heritage with some Amazonians, notably the Surue people. The scientists came to the conclusion that these people were not the source of this ancestry directly, but rather through a now extinct population they refer to as Population Y, 
which may have resided in East Asia and provided genes to both very early Paleo-Americans and Australo-Melanesians. The research deduces that this implies an ancient rather than recent genetic contribution that came to the Americas in an early pulse of migration, because the Amazonian populations are only distantly connected to population Y. The traditional Paleo-American paradigm, which assumes a significant, more direct genetic contribution from Australo-Melanesians, conflicts with the facts. Despite this the two papers are not in dispute in that sense. The earliest South American immigrants had indigenous Australian and Melanesian ancestry, and a more recent study reveals the broad spectrum of Australasian DNA in the Americas. Indigenous populations in South America, particularly those descending from Peru's Moshika culture, were determined to have Australasian heritage by researchers. As previously mentioned, scientists made the unexpected discovery that some indigenous peoples in the Brazilian Amazon were distantly linked to native Australians and Melanesians, while still clearly deriving from them. Researchers were left in a panic as a genetic indication of Australasian ancestry in such a remote community emerged. The people who brought these genes to the New World probably came from an ancestral Siberian population, according to a more recent study that shows this genetic signal is more common in South America than previously thought. The discovery also sheds light on the migration paths taken by those individuals to South America. In fact, it demonstrates that the prior discovery wasn't merely an aberration. It is a broad genetic marker. When sea levels were substantially lower than they are today, possibly approximately 20,000 years ago, bands of hardy hunter-gatherers are believed to have left Siberia and entered the now-submerged country of Beringia, which at the time connected Eurasia and Alaska. Then, somewhere around 15,000 years ago, some left Beringia and dispersed across North and South America. These early immigrants moved quickly. Radiocarbon dating suggests they were establishing camps in Monteverde in southern Chile by 14,800 years ago, at the latest. Based on the DNA of more than 200 living and extinct individuals, the DNA investigations revealed Australasian heritage in two indigenous Amazonian communities, the Caratiana and Suru. Many of them have a distinctive collection of genetic alterations known as the Y signal, which was named after the 2P term meaning. Ancestor in Brazil. Some scientists hypothesized that some of the early South American migrants already had the Y signal. Others hypothesized that the Y signal may have been introduced to individuals already residing in the Amazon by a subsequent migration of people linked to modern day Australasians. 383 contemporary South Americans, including dozens of newly genotyped persons living in the Brazilian Amazon and Central Plateau had their genetic information evaluated for the study. To ensure that the results would be transferred in the best way to the indigenous communities, the researchers worked closely with indigenous people. The Zavanti, who reside on the Brazilian plateau in the center of the country, and the Chotuna people of Peru, who were descended from the Moshika civilization that occupied that country's coast from roughly 100 AD to 800 AD were the first populations outside the Amazon to have the Y signal recognized by scientists. Next, the researchers tested other hypotheses that could have contributed to the current DNA dispersion using software. According to the researchers, the most likely scenario is some of the first South American migrants taking the Y signal with them. Between 15,000 and 8,000 years ago, those settlers most likely traveled along the coast before diverging into the Middle Plateau and Amazon. If that were the case, the data would exactly match your prediction. Why the Y signal hasn't appeared in any indigenous populations in North or Central America is one outstanding question. The Y signal bearing migrants might have just kept to the coast and reached South America without leaving any genetic traces back up north, which is one scenario. It's also plausible that Y ancestry populations did formerly inhabit North and Central America but they perished there in the violent wake of European invasion. This is a fascinating component to add to the puzzle of the population Y signal. To fully understand the mysteries, scientists agree that more genomes from both contemporary and historical Native Americans are required. For the time being, the two manuscripts offer an extremely thrilling insight into the lives of the Native Americans of today, as they prepared to set foot in the New World.